Hi everyone, welcome to my home. I'm sorry that we had to cancel Art Club due to the craziness that's going on right now in the world, but I've created three videos for you to complete the Famous Portraits project that we were doing during the spring term. So um, the three videos are of Wesley Kandinsky, Yayoi Kasama and Leonora Carrington, and that's going to complete the project. So it, it means that the kids have a really positive experience with the completed artwork so that when we do come back to Art Club, we can just get straight into the next project. Um, so I'm going to start off with Wassily Kandinsky, um, one of my favourite artists, so I'm really excited to teach this to you. If you do have any feedback for me, please let me know. This is the first time that I'm doing this, so um, your feedback is really, really appreciated. Please send me your comments. Um, okay, let's get started. So you guys are going to need to know what to prepare. Um, so let's get stuck in and, and see what we need. This is what you'll need. A sheet of paper, probably no bigger than A4, either A5 or A4 is absolutely fine. An eraser, a pencil and a small, medium and large paintbrush. If you only have a couple of size paintbrushes then that's fine. So a small or medium or medium and large or small and large is absolutely fine, okay? Um, you'll need some gouache paint. Now not everyone has gouache paint. Um, so you can use acrylic, you could use watercolour, you could even use coloured pencils if you really have to. Um, but I'm going to be using gouache paint. This is the type of gouache paint that I use. Um, it's artist quality. So it, uh, it produces really nice results and um, I buy it in big bottles. It goes a really long way. You only need a pea-sized amount of gouache paint. Um, you can get gouache paint from all different types of places like Hobbycraft or The Range or Jackson Art Online um, and a whole host of other places so you won't find any shortage of gouache paint but if you do only have acrylic or watercolour then that's fine as well. Um, you're going to need some colours, you'll definitely need black and white and you'll definitely need the three primary colours, red, yellow and blue. If you also have um, some other colours then that would be useful as well. Um, brown and green are, are fantastic and if you have any others to use to throw into to the mix um, then then that's great but as long as you have red, yellow, blue, white and black then that's fine. Um, you're going to need a pot for water and you're going to need a palette. I always cover my palettes in foil um, because it's just super easy cleaning. I just at the end scrap the foil and pop it in the recycling bin. That's all you need. Okay let's get started. Hey everyone welcome back. Um, we're going to be starting with the portrait of Wassily Kandinsky, this one here. There he is. So on the back of your paper, I would like you to write Wassily Kandinsky. He was born in 1866, a long, long time ago, and he passed in 1944, not that long ago. So go ahead, press pause on this and write that on the back of your paper. And when you come back to me, we're going to have a little chat about who he was and what he did for art. Hey everyone, welcome back. So hopefully you managed to write down what you can see on the board on the back of your paper. Now you can turn over your paper so you can see the front of your paper. And we're going to have a little talk about who Wassily was and what he did for art. <clears throat> so Wassily was a Russian painter and he was actually a lawyer. His family didn't want him to become an artist. They wanted him to become a lawyer and so that's what he did. And he was a very, very successful lawyer. And at the age of 30, he decided that he didn't want to do that anymore. He wanted to become an artist. And so he started training as an artist. But he also didn't want to paint the things that other artists were painting. Things like um, objects, still lives, landscapes, portraits, anything like that. He wasn't really interested in that. Instead, he wanted to paint his feelings and emotions. So imagine, imagine how we would paint our feelings and emotions. What would we do? How would we achieve that? Well, Wassily decided that he would use music to try to do that. So he would have music playing in the background and he would try to paint with colour what he could hear and how it made him feel. 
And people thought he was absolutely mad for doing this. They thought that he was crazy. No one had done this before, ever. He was the first artist, so people thought he was absolutely mad. And it was a long time before people actually started to realise that really he was a genius and that he had created something completely new. And so Wassily is going to be our artist for today. He's who we're going to be painting. So let's begin. I'll take this down because you've written what you need. And let's start our drawing. Can you please take your pencil? It should be nice and sharp. Okay, like always, we're going to be starting with the eyes. Okay, so exactly the same way that we've been doing all of the other portraits. We start with the eyes and we're going to build out from there. Okay, so get your fingers ready. We're going to find roughly the middle of the page and then we're going to hop up just a little bit. Okay, so just above from the middle. Okay, and it's there that we're going to start the first eye, all right, or just to the side of that actually. So everyone knows how I like to do my eyes. I'm going to start with that unhappy face, okay, or that squashed rainbow, but I like to call it an unhappy face. Right, let's add that happy face right underneath so that we have our almond. Let's go ahead and add that circle. Now our circle has to touch the top and the bottom of our almond. And then we're going to add in that little circle in the middle. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, just go ahead and press pause. I'll try to take my time so that you can follow along easily. All right, let's go ahead and do that slug for that eyebrow. Let's do a slug right at the top of the eyebrow. They're nice, big slug. He had bushy eyebrows. And then we're going to start to do the nose coming down. So we're going to touch the inside of the eyebrow right here. We're going to touch. We're going to go down, 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 and we're going to hook round. Okay, now he had a very hooky nose. He had a tight hook for a nose. So make sure you come down nice and long and then hook round. Good. Let's go up, down, and around. Up, down, and around so that we get in the nostril. Now underneath, we're going to get that V shape. So let's measure the the gap in between our nose and our lips. So we're going to take our finger, we're going to put it under our nose and above our lip in that gap there and measure. I can feel my nose and the top of my lip. Maybe you can't, maybe there's a bit more of a gap on your nose and mouth. So mine's only that big, the width of my finger. Okay, check the width of yours and that's the width that we're going to do his here. So I'm going to start with my V shape, get that V shape in there. And then we're going to turn it into that flying bird. So I'm going to start off at one corner, this corner of my V shape, and put in my flying bird, but I'm going to make one wing a lot bigger than the other one. So there's my short wing and there's my long wing. Good. Then let's close lip. This is just the top lip that we're doing now. So we're going to close the top lip and then we're going to work on the bottom lip. Okay, so let's go ahead, let's put that in. There's my top lip. Before I put in the bottom lip, I'm just going to add the um, pipe that he liked to smoke. Okay, so forget the bottom lip just for now. Let's add in a pipe. So let's add in two straight lines coming from his mouth out into the, into the rest of the paper here. So towards the edge of your paper. And then we're going to put in the rest of the pipe. So my top line, I'm going to touch my top line. I'm going to go up. And then I'm going to touch my bottom line. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make it a bit wider. Let's touch our bottom line and let's come out and up. So you can see I've got a nice sort of space going on in here. And my two lines are just about equal, just about. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit off. Let's go ahead and add in a very squashed circle or oval shape onto the top of that. So there's the pipe. You could even add some nice smoke coming up, bubbling up out of the pipe, or perhaps he's blowing bubbles instead. You could have little bubbles coming up. Perhaps they start little teeny tiny ones getting bigger and bigger. Have a little think about what you would like to add to his pipe. Something fun, perhaps. Okay, now you can add in the bottom lip. 
So I'm going to touch this side, but mm, okay, I've got a pipe in the way. So I'm going to jump over my pipe and I'm going to keep on going all the way to the other end of his lip. So now I've got the top and the bottom lip and I've jumped over his pipe so that I haven't just drawn straight through that beautiful pipe. Fantastic. Now, he's a one-eyed pirate at the moment, so let's put in his second eye. Okay, now let's get those pincers, our thumb and our finger, and we're going to put our thumb in one corner of this eye and our finger in this corner of that eye, and we're going to measure how far apart our eyes are. Mine are that far apart. So not very far at all. So go ahead and measure how far apart your eyes are. And we're going to use that measurement for your portrait. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in that sad face. And underneath that sad face, you know what to do. Put in the happy face. And let's add in the circle and the tiny circle. Now, if you wanted him looking in a certain direction, for instance, if you wanted him looking over there, then you would put both those teeny tiny circles right in the corner of the big circles. And if you wanted him looking over this way, then you would put those teeny tiny circles in the corner, this corner of your big circles. All right, let's get in that slug of an eyebrow, big slug. And then we're going to work on the ear. Now let's take that measurement. We're going to put our hand on the top of our ear and we're going to draw a line coming across our face. Now I touch just in the corner of my eye, so the top of my ear comes just about to the corner of my eye. So I'm going to use that measurement for when I'm doing his ear as well. So I'm going to start my ear where about the corner of his eye is, but I'm going to leave a nice big gap. Okay, so if I take that line, I'm going to come across with my finger and I'm going to use that gap, that measurement, I'm going to start to put in the ear. Okay, go ahead and do that. And then we're going to put in the moon shape for the inside of his ear. So there's my moon shape for the inside of his ear. Good, well done. Okay. Now we're going to start to put in the rest of the, the face because at the moment his features are just floating out in space. So we have to get something to bring them all together again. So let's start at the eyebrow right here. We're going to come down. We're going to come quite close to the corner of the eye. So I touch the eyebrow, come quite close to the corner of the eye. We're going to go down and out a little bit. So I've created a hill. If I turn this around, you can see I've created two hills. Okay, let's keep going. So I'm going to take that line. I'm going to go down, 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 down. I'm going to hop over my pipe. I'm going to keep going down, down, down because I want to come right around his lips so that I'm doing the chin. Okay, so I need a nice big gap in between his lips for his chin. Okay, so let's go down, down, and then we're going to go up, 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 and we're going to touch the corner of his ear here. All right, now we're going to do the head and the hair. So let's come back over to the eyebrow where we started and let's go up, 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 up. So that we're going to give him a bald head now. He's not gonna have any hair for a little while. And then when we get there, we're gonna do kind of like these nice curvy lines until we come down and touch the top of his ear this time. So he's got a very bald curly head. Let's give him some hair. Let's come back to the eyebrow here. But I'm not going to start at the eyebrow. Instead, I'm going to jump up a little way and I'm going to start here. And I'm not going to make his hair super straight. I'm going to make it a little bit wibbly wobbly. You don't want to make it really wibbly wobbly like big waves on an ocean, more like ripples on a pond, just a little bit of a wave. And he actually had a beard. So we're going to start at the corner of the hair and the top of the ear here, right here. We're going to touch there and we're going to come down, 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 down. We're going to head towards the lips. So you can see I've almost touched the lips, but not quite. Instead, I'm going to come up and touch the nose. I'm going to jump over the nose. I'm going to go down, down, down and touch the corner of the face. So now he's got his beard in here as well. 
We can even close that beard by touching the bottom of the ear and bringing a line up to the top of the hair just to close off that beard a little bit more. Okay, easy peasy so far, yes? Yes, good. Okay, now, Wassily was a lawyer and he loved to wear black, even though he loved colour, he loved lots of colour. He mostly wore black and he usually wore a tie, he was very smart. I guess deep down inside he was a lawyer perhaps. So we're going to start over here, we're going to draw in the neck and the shoulders. So just under the ear here, I'm going to come down, 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 and then I'm going to go off the page, just straight off the page. There's my neck and my shoulders going straight off the page. And then I'm going to touch his chin this time. I'm going to touch the chin and I'm just going to go straight off the page here. Okay. And then we're going to give him a suit. Okay. So underneath his chin, <clears throat> I'm going to start with a tie. <clears throat> underneath the chin, I'm going to start with kind of like a square, but not really. It doesn't have those sharp corners like a square normally does. Instead, it's got rounded corners. So it's a lazy square, very, very lazy. Underneath that square, we're going to do a line coming straight off the page here <clears throat> and a line straight off the page there. If you wanted to, you could give him some patterns on his tie, perhaps some polka dots, perhaps some um, squiggles, perhaps some zigzags, anything you like. So press pause, do something nice for his tie, give him a nice patterned tie. And then we're going to do the shirt and the rest of his, his suit. So I'm going to touch the top of his tie and I'm going to do a curved line going right off onto his shoulder. You can see here I've touched his shoulder. And then I'm going to do the other side of that shirt. So let's start about roughly here. I'm going to come down. I'm going to do a zigzag. And I'm going to keep coming down and then up. I'll do the same over here. I touch the top of the tie and I'm just going to come up and touch his shoulder. I'm going to leave a nice big gap. I'm going to come down. I'm going to do a zigzag. I'm going to keep going down and then I'm going to go up and there's his shirt. And again, if you wanted to do some patterns on his shirt, then you go ahead and do that. Just press pause on this video. Go ahead and do what you would like to do and then come back to me afterwards. OK, so we've done most of the drawing, I think. Let's have a look. Yes, all we need to have a look at now is the background. So, um, as I said, Wassily loved to do, um, he loved to paint his emotions, so he painted abstract art. He was the first painter to create an abstract piece of artwork. Before that, it had mostly been objects, people, landscapes, seascapes, everything like that. So he was the first person to introduce abstract painting into our world. And abstract is when you don't recognise it. For what it is so you can't say that it's um, a vase or a flower because you just don't recognize that it is and he painted his emotions as well so we can't really recognize his emotions either we have to really really think about it and really feel the colors in his paintings to perhaps recognize what he was trying to portray the message that he was trying to give us so we're going to have a little go at that we're going to keep it quite light. We're going to be um, we're going to be quite random with it. So let's just have a little play and experiment and just see what happens. I'm going to touch anywhere on his uh, uh, on the corner of his face. It doesn't matter where you start doing this. So I'm just going to start here on his cheek, and I'm just going to do some lines coming out. Okay. Now let's just be random with it. Let's just have a play and experiment and see what happens. So you can see I'm just adding lines wherever I feel that they should go, okay? Perhaps you want to add circles, perhaps you want to add triangles, perhaps you want to add squiggly lines, or mm, anything, anything you like, okay? Complete, completely abstract, okay? We shouldn't be able to really recognise anything that's going on here. Okay, so we're just creating like a an odd background and then we're going to have a look at how to paint that. 
All right, that is the drawing complete. So you can put your pencils down and let's have a look at how to create the skin color. Let's get those paints out. All right, time for the parents to get involved. So we're gonna put some paints down now. Um, I'm gonna start with my white. So remember, I'm using gouache, but you might not have gouache at home. That's fine. You could use um, acrylic paint or watercolor. Um, you could even use colored pencils. Um, so just whatever you have lying around. If you are using gouache or acrylic, just put a pea-sized um, blob of paint down that and that will be absolutely fine because we're going to be watering it down so you don't need very much. Let's put the white in the middle and the remaining colours we're going to put around the outside. Brown, black. If you don't have brown then um, the kiddies can create it. They can use pretty much any colour to create brown. Um, you could use green and orange, green and red, uh, blue and orange, um, all sorts. So just let them have a little experiment. So I'm just gonna put the other colors around the outside like this. Just a pea-sized splodge for each one. The most important colors are the yellow, red, and blue, the primary colors, plus the black and white. They're the most important. Anything else is, is a bonus. Okay, so it should look roughly something like that. And then you can hand back over to the kiddies so that they can do the mixing. We're gonna use a, a medium brush. So you might have a large, medium and small brush, um, or you might just have one brush or two brushes, whatever you have, go for something that's roughly medium like this one. And we're gonna start by adding water to all of these little blobs. So let's start with the white. We're gonna do 10, um, 10 splashes of water. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's just mix that in. So we've got a nice creamy consistency. It should be really creamy or milky. It should flow really nicely. Okay, that's good, we like that. I'm just gonna get off the excess paint there and then let's turn our water to milk now. So you see it's got all milky in there as well. Give your brush a little tap. And we're gonna be doing the skin color now. So I'm gonna take a tiny, tiny little bit of the yellow. So I've got that on the tip of my paintbrush there. I'm gonna put that in. So we've got something really light and um, light and yellow, but not very yellow. It's very, very pale. Okay, mix that into your mixture and then just take off the excess. Give your paintbrush another wash. Really rinse it through and then give it a tap on the edge. Get rid of those big drips because we don't want to keep drowning the paint. We're going to go into the red now, but we're going to get an even smaller bit of red. We don't want very much red. I've got a bit too much there. Don't want very much red at all because red is really strong. We don't want to give it that much power over the yellow. So we want to create something peachy um, because Kandinsky was Russian. So he had kind of peachy skin. I'm gonna put in a little bit more red. Mine isn't quite red enough. There we go. Now you might be seeing a different color to what I'm seeing because the down lights above me are going to make it look a little bit different to you. But what I can see is kind of a peachy color, a pinky peachy color. So now that's ready to go. I'm gonna wash my brush. Okay, and then I'm gonna just water down the other colors a little bit so that they're ready to go later on when I need them. So just like we did for, for in here, we're just gonna water down the rest. You can do that now. And then you can come back to me when we're going to slowly take the paintbrush across our hands so that we can get ready for painting. Okay, so go ahead, water down your other colors and then come back to me. All right, so hopefully you've watered down the other colors just a little bit. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves how to paint. So we've got a, a wet brush there and I'm just gonna turn my hand over. Uh, the aim is to try to tickle the back of our hand or the palm of our hand or the wrist by going up and down from the tips of the fingers all the way up 
to the wrist. You can even go up the arm if you like. Just take your time, close your eyes and see if you can tickle your hand. And if you can tickle your hand, and that's exactly how we want to use the paintbrush with our paper. We don't want to be rough with it. We want to be really soft. We want to tickle the paper just like that. That's exactly what the paper should feel. Nothing rougher than that. Okay. All right. Let's get started with some painting. All right, so we're ready to start painting. Um, I realized that because of the lighting in here, um, you'll probably notice that my paint on the palette looked quite yellow. Actually, it's not, it's very peachy. Um, so just bear that in mind when you're mixing your paint. Okay, so it's really watered down. We're gonna use that medium brush and we're going to start painting the skin color. So we're gonna be filling in a, a lot of the gaps. I'm starting, I like to start at the top of the painting okay just for just for practical reasons so that my arm isn't dragging through it as I as I am um, go up my painting so instead I'm coming down and then I can keep my elbows out of it so we're going to start at the bottom of the hair and I'm just going to go straight through those eyebrows I'm not worried because my paint is watered down so much I'm going to be able to see the whole drawing underneath the paint and you should be able to see yours as well if you can't see yours, then it isn't quite watered down enough. So go ahead and add more water. But if you can see your drawing, absolutely fine. Then you've done a, a brilliant first job of getting that nice and watery. Just go straight over the nose, come down. I'm gonna to touch the beard. I've got a few drips coming down because mine's so watery stripping everywhere that's all right it's all right to make a mess when you're doing art that's one of the great things about art is that you can make a mess no artist should leave without paint splattered everywhere okay let's do the lips as well don't worry about staying within the lines don't worry about that at all okay. and let's add the ear as well Again, don't worry about staying in the lines, it's absolutely fine. Let's jump over the beard and do the neck. So over the beard and above the tie, that's his neck. So we're gonna get that in. And those are all the places, I think, yes. Those are all the places that you need to do the skin color. I'm gonna take that nice milk chocolate brown and I'm going to add a teeny, teeny, tiny bit of white to it so that I'm making it really creamy. And I'm going to use that to paint in, in the pipe, okay? So you can use your small brush, you can use your medium brush, whichever you like. Just get that pipe in there. Okay. And then I'm also going to use the same colour to start painting his hair because I want to have different types of browns coming through his hair. I don't want them all to be the same brown. And I can, as I'm painting, you can see I'm slightly going over my line into his hair, just slightly coming over. I'm just going to paint with this nice milk chocolatey brown and some other places as well. Okay, just scatter it around. Coming over my line. And I might even bring it down into the beard a little bit as well. Okay, I'm just scattering, scattering around this nice milk chocolatey brown. So you choose, you decide where that brown's going to go, which parts of his hair, which parts of his beard. Just create some patches at the moment of brown. I'm just gonna give myself some more brown because I've used it very quickly. Okay, so wash it down a little bit as well. I'm gonna make that nice milk chocolate. And this time I'm gonna add a tiny bit of black to it. Just a tiny bit of black. Remember black is the strongest color of the palette. I know lots of you are, gonna, are going to know that already because I say it all the time. Black is the strongest color of the palette. If it was in an argument with red, black would win. 
if it was in an argument with yellow, black would win. If it was in an argument with green or purple or any of the colours, black would win every single time. It's the strongest colour of the palette. So when we use black, we only use a teeny tiny bit because we don't want it to argue with our other colours. Right, let's take that dark chocolate brown and start adding it over the top. So you can see now that we've got some nice colours coming through. We don't just have a flat, one flat brown. We've got some other browns coming through here as well. And it should flow like butter. So if it doesn't, a bit like mine, mine's not flowing like butter at the moment. It's gone a bit dry. Can you see here? But now, okay, there we go. I just added a tiny bit of water and now it's flowing like butter for me. It should be really, really smooth to paint with. If it's if it's dry, if it's too dry, if it's not watered down enough, it can get really sticky um, and it, it, it doesn't flow very nicely. It's kind of, it's, um, yeah, it kind of goes dry even across the page. Now I want to make sure that I don't match the brown to my pipe. I want my pipe to stand out. I don't want it to match. So I'm going to be quite careful about that. Mine's kind of matching, isn't it? I might change that because I don't want it to match. If it's matching, then hmm, we're not going to see my pipe very well. So of course, I don't want that to happen. I'm just going to come over and create some hairs from here. I don't want a lovely straight line or anything. Uh, now, yeah, my pipe definitely matches the beard. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to add a little bit of black, a bit more black to my brown, a bit more black. I want to make it really dark so it's almost entirely black and then I'm going to paint over again that stands out a bit more doesn't it I'm going to add even more black to that let's go over again yeah that's looking better every time okay yeah that kind of stands out you could go the other way. You could make it lighter than your beard as well. It could be really, really, really light, but I like mine quite black. All right, let's get in the eyebrows now. I'm gonna need a bit more brown. I've run out of brown again. A bit more brown. Let me give my brush a wash. And I'm gonna come into the brown, making it like milk chocolate, remember? Always like milk chocolate. I'm just going to paint over those eyebrows. Okay, and give them little hairs, make them bushy. Okay, perfect. His eye colour was brown as well. So let's go into the brown with our small brush and we're just going to do the entire eye brown. So I'm not worried about the pupil. Just going to go straight over the top of that teeny tiny circle. I'm not worried about that. I can still see it, so that's fine. I'm just painting in that entire circle. I'm going to leave the rest of it white. I'm not worried about that. And when that dries, which will be really quickly, we can come back and paint black over the top of that. In the meantime, you can have a think about the colours that you want to use for the shirt, tie and jacket. Now, um, he liked to wear black a lot, uh, so you could give him, or, um, or dark, he liked to wear dark colours, not just black, but dark colours. So you could give him a dark coloured suit, but you could also give him a bright coloured suit as well. Depends what, what you want to do for your artwork and what you think might be best for your artwork. So go ahead and choose the colours that you want to do for his tie, his shirt, collar and his jacket. And then you can come back to me and we'll paint in those little pupils in his eyes and then we can do the background. Okay, hopefully you've given your Kandinsky portrait a lovely suit, either dark colours or bright colours, whatever you fancy. So now that the eyes have dried, we can put in the blacks of the eyes. So let's go ahead, let's use our small paintbrush. We're gonna go into the black. We're going to do 
small circles inside the big circles. Now, if, you, if you're quite worried about doing circles, about painting circles, then just take your brush and do a splodge. Or you could take a cotton bud and do a splodge that way as well, okay, if you're worried. I want to try to make them roughly the same size, roughly, roughly, roughly. Something like that would be absolutely fine. All right, now let's have a little talk about the background. So we want to add lots of different colours to this. He loved colour, he loved to use colour. And like I said, he used colours to portray different emotions. So if he wanted to um, create a message in his painting that he was sad or that he was happy, or that he was frightened, then he would use certain colours to give that message. So I would like you to decide what colours you're going to use for your background based on what message you would like to give. So have a think. Do you want to say in your painting that you're happy? Do you want to say that you're sad or frightened or whatever it might be, joyful, peaceful, calm, whatever emotion that you're feeling, we can go ahead and paint in the background using the colours that you think might give that message. And if you're not sure, then just use any colours that you like. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Just experiment and see what happens. Just give it a go. Any colours that you like. Now I'm going to do the same right now and then I'm going to come back to you and show you what I've done. Hey, okay, so now I've done my background. I chose to make it really colourful, but I paled down the colours. I used a lot of white with mixing my colours. And so I've got pale yellows, pale pinks, pale blues, pale greens, because I wanted... Um, Wesley Kandinsky to really stand out and I wanted to give him a nice cheerful background so there he is he stands out nicely and it's quite a joyful background quite cheerful quite happy so that, they're the colours that I chose to go with and I've also painted in his suit now as well I didn't want to paint that in before you painted it in because I wanted you to use your own imagination for that bit and also for the background as well so I'm sure you've done a really amazing job now we're going to come back to the portrait again because your skin tone will probably have dried about now if it was watered down enough it's probably dry if it wasn't watered down enough and maybe it's still a little bit wet you can dab that with some tissue or maybe go over it with a hair dryer just try to dry it as best you can it doesn't have to be super 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 dry just as long as it's a little bit dry is absolutely fine. Mine's nice and dry now. So now we get to do his glasses. He was wearing glasses in the portrait that I showed you before at the very start of the video. So we're gonna do his glasses and we're also going to do the top of the pipe there as well. Okay, you're gonna need your pencil again for this bit. And we're going to start with this eye. Okay, we're just gonna do a couple of straight lines. Get that pencil. Let's do the straight line in between the eyebrow and the eye, okay, in between there, okay, don't be nervous, um, just take your pencil and do a line going in between the eye and the eyebrow, and it needs to stretch wider than the eye, it needs to go wider than the eye, so make it stretch, and then we're going to do a nice big half circle going all the way around the eye and back up again, okay, here we go, I'm going to touch the top of the the line and go up, 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 up. So you can see now the glass is going all the way around the eye there. Let's do the same over here. I'm going to do a line in between the eyebrow and the eye and it needs to reach all the way from one side of the eye to the other. It can't be shorter than the eye, otherwise it's not gonna work. And let's go around with our half circle. I'm gonna to touch the corner of that line and I'm gonna go down, down, down and around, around, around and back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Okay, so we've got the other side now and then we can join them together in between there over the nose so let's go ahead and add in a kind of a, a rainbow shape a squashed rainbow shape or an unhappy face and go over the nose there and then we can add in the uh, the bit that goes around the ear okay so we're going to touch the side the side of the glasses here and we're just going to do a line it goes across to the ear okay now we're not going to go over that again okay we're not going to double the lines so that we have two lines we're not going to do that instead we're just going to paint it in black okay so you're going to need your tiny paintbrush for this bit 
All right, I'm gonna use my medium paintbrush because I've got a huge piece of paper that you're going to use your teeny tiny paintbrush if you have one. All right, so let's go into the black, okay? Go into that black, now it should be watered down already. If it's not, just go ahead, add a little bit of water. Perhaps it's gone even a bit, a bit dry now, perhaps it needs a little bit more water anyway. So go ahead and make it nice and watery. And first of all, let's do the pipe. Okay, let's fill in that gap with black. There we are. Lovely. And now with your tiny paintbrush, we're going to go over the glasses that you've just drawn. All right, now try to have a super steady hand, okay, really steady. We're gonna to try to make the, these lines nice, okay? And if they don't come out very nice, if you're not very happy with your lines, then we'll go over it again, make it a bit thicker. So the glasses can kind of grow, the rims of the glasses can grow if you need them to, that's fine. They don't have to be very thin, okay? But you can grow them if you want. Let's have a go. I'm just going to paint straight over my line like this and down. Oh, it's tricky, it's a tricky one. Keep that hand nice and steady. It's just like drawing over your line again, except for with a paintbrush. I'm sure you're doing a much better job than me. Okay, at the top. Complete that top bit. And then the line going across to the ear. There we go. Now remember, if you're not happy with your lines, if perhaps they're too wobbly or the brush has flicked a bit and you're just not happy with them, then go over it again and it'll just grow the, the frame, the glasses frame. They'll just become a bit thicker and a bit thicker, which is absolutely fine. But the important thing is that you give it a go and just see what happens. Plus it looks so much better now that you've got his glasses. He looks way more completed now so it looks a lot more finished which is perfect that's what we want okay that's Wassily Kandinsky now if you wanted to add a bit more detail then you could you could add a little bit more detail to the hair if you wanted for instance you could add in some black lines like little hairs this is the great thing about gouache paint as well is that you can use it kind of like drawing so you can add in some lines you could add brown lines you could give him some lines in the beard you could um, change the background a little bit, change your colour. You could add more detail to the suit or to the tie. Okay, you could do lots of different things now with the gouache paint and really start to layer it up by doing these extra kind of drawings around the, around the paint. But otherwise, that's Wesley Kandinsky done. Well done, guys. I'll see you soon for the next video.